Well, it's that time once again to talk about a fragrance house so overpriced and so insulting to its audience that it keeps releasing lower and lower quality fragrances for higher and higher price ranges. And it thinks that because of its name value and its prestigiousness, that it can just do anything that it wants and continue to put out low quality fragrances that are getting worse and worse and worse for fragrances that are virtually doubling, sometimes even tripling each year. Anyway, that's enough about the House of Creed for today. So now let's talk about White Tie by Fragrance One, which of course is Jeremy Fragrance's brand. So I'm going to start by talking about my initial relationship with this fragrance. I actually smell a prototype tester version of this, which Jeremy called the Devil DNA, which I quite liked when I was in Los Angeles working for him for that one week in, I think, March or April. And I smelt this fragrance and I remember thinking that is easily the best one that he's done. It's the best fragrance that he's made. It's quite different. It's quite niche. It's, it's not like Office and, you know, I've grown to enjoy Office a, a little bit more um, over, the, over the months and over the past year. But this is different. This is quite a step above this is quite a step into a new and different direction. This is a lot darker, a lot less focused on the sweetness, a lot less focused on the mainstream appeal. This is quite daring, actually, as far as Jeremy's concerned, especially when he seems to really, really want um, a fragrance that is universal and gets compliments and all that kind of stuff. And I remember thinking to myself, there is no way that he can screw this up. Anyway, I got this for free. I got this sent to me uh, by Jeremy. I think that it's only me and real men, uh, real style, who are getting a free bottle of this. And so I didn't actually know the price. I just said, "Hey, you know, can I, can I, um, can I get black tie and?" Then I saw the price, and it was $400. I've seen this price being called quite a few things. Um, disgusting, outrageous, a con. What, what word would I use? Um, infuriating. And it just kind of pisses me off sometimes that Jeremy doesn't get it and doesn't get sort of what he can and what he can't or rather what he should and what he shouldn't do. And so I started going down that road of like, oh God, this is, oh my God. No. And then I started to go, no, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to just give a sort of an, an emotional, um, you know, outrage and all that because it's not constructive and it's not helpful in any way. I don't want to be one of the fragrance controls just ripping Jeremy and Fragrance One a new one. There's plenty of that already. Instead, I wanted to go, why is this infuriating? Why is this irritating? And why is it that some of Jeremy's hardcore fans have even looked at the price and gone, look, this is out of control, like, and they feel kind of let down by it. And so I started to step back and go, what is the kind of the problem, the underlying problem with Fragrance One? And so, Jeremy, if you're watching, which I, I obviously presume that you are, this is not going to be at all a, a hate video or a, you know, a, 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 or a bashing or anything like that. I actually want this to be genuinely a constructive video. And I want to constructively criticize some of the things that I've noticed and some of the things that I've seen because I've figured out what the one main problem of this whole brand is. And it's very simple and it's very straightforward. And the big thing is it's easily, easily fixable. And here lies the issue. This brand is now wrestling with whether it's a practical brand 
or a prestigious brand. And usually you can't be both. So we start off with office. Okay, so this is a fragrance that is going to be great for the, the office. And fragrance one is gonna be a brand where it's going to be one fragrance, right? One fragrance for different occasions. Brilliant concept and underrated. This concept has never been done before. There's never really been a conceptually consistent brand where it's just all about a setting or a theme or a thing that you're doing. There's been fragrances that have been titled after situations or scenarios, but never a brand devoted to them. And so we've got to give credit where it's due. And so this is going to be the number one office fragrance. Brilliant. Great. Okay, cool. But then suddenly Jeremy starts saying that this is going to be the most maximum greatest fragrance of all time. It will burn your skin. It will d devour your family or whatever it is that he said. And it's, but basically, it's going to be the most insane fragrance, incredible fragrance of all time. And that's when we start to hit a few rough patches. And that's when there's a sort of a fork in the road. Because which one is it? Is it the most greatest fragrance that's going to burn your face and do all of this kind of stuff to you? Or why can't you just let it be what it's supposed to be, which is a great office fragrance. Is Office for Men a great office fragrance? Yeah. I mean, what's the criteria for a great office fragrance? Clean, nice, pleasant, you know, wearable, manageable. Sure, fine, okay, yeah. Then in that case, this is great. I'm now gonna segue to the presentation of Black Tie because this also kind of showcases the issue of this brand, which is there's no sort of clarity of what this brand is supposed to be. Sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't. So here lies the problem. Let's get to presentation. If I'm to judge this as a practical brand, as a sort of a very efficient German brand, which seems to be what the impetus of it was, which is this is the one fragrance for office for a date or for a black tie event. If I think about it purely on a practical basis, and let's say that this fragrance was only about 50, 60 or 70 dollars or euros. If we think in that way, then we look at this presentation and it's perfect. It works. It's simple. It's straightforward. It's efficient. It's proficient. It's practical. It's dead on. And I would be happy to give this a four out of five presentation wise, but then modeled in all of this is, well, no, it, it's a prestigious brand. It's this high class, expensive, prestigious brand. And then suddenly the rating for this fragrance under that, guys, is like a two or a 2.5. It's amazing how one shift of context changes the rating because context and theme is important. It's one of the biggest things any fragrance reviewer will tell you. What is the fragrance trying to achieve? What's the presentation trying to achieve? What's the whole point of the thing? If this is a purely practical brand that's 50 to 60 to 70 dollars, perfect. Four out of five, no questions asked. But then suddenly, oh wait, no, it's a prestigious thing and it's this and it's Tom Ford and it's in the same league as Craig Roger Dove. Bam, two out of five, 2.5 out of five because it doesn't meet that criteria. For it to be a four or five out of five, it's gonna have it has to have sort of bling coming out of its ears, or it has to have or it has to not look so simple and so straightforward and so plain. And so that in itself is the ultimate issue here. So let's go to the scent. Again, if we're looking at this as a very, very practical thing, it is fragrance one. This is the number one fragrance for a black tie event. Well, actually, then we're really, really sort of getting somewhere. We're on like four, 4.5 out of five because this is a pretty decently high quality fragrance. There are some synthetics, definitely, but there's quite a few natural things. It starts off with this kind of combination of two ideas, which is like Jean Valvados, Dark Rebel and Gucci Guilty Absolute sort of had a baby and you've got that kind of really resinous somewhat kind of medicinal scent going on, which is very unique and very unusual. But then it's got this harsh leathery accord and then there's a lot of sweetness and this sort of like signature fragrance one sweetness that's like 
putting it round and then it really, really works. This is then very confident, it's very assertive, it's very cool. As it goes along, which we'll get to in a minute, this performance is very, very long and there's quite a long journey going along with it. But mainly what you're going to get is a medicinal kind of like car seat leather or like biker jacket leather with a lot of these kind of dried fruit sweetness elements with just a nominal amount of sugar, very balanced, and a really, really good base of woods. But there's 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 a lot going on. And there's kind of like an inky, oily texture in here, especially on the skin. That's quite interesting. That's quite cool. So speaking again, practically, if this was 60 to $70, you could have a 4.5 out of five pretty easily. But then you say, well, this is a prestigious niche brand and you have the financial choice of either buying this or a PlayStation 5, well, that's going to drop the rating like a stone. And now I'm looking more at 2.5, maybe 3 if I'm being really generous. For a cent to achieve a 4 or 5.5 at this price point, with these expectations, it has to be like insane. It has to be a Roger Dove. I bought uh, the new, I can never forget the year, the Burlington fragrance, the Roger Dove Burlington fragrance. That is super duper high quality. Very simple, citrus, floral, but man, it is so natural. It honestly smells as though you've sprayed like literal flowers and green grass and oranges onto your skin. That is the level that you have to be at where you can look somebody in the eye and say, hey, $300, $350, $400. Roja Dove realistically is one of the only mainstream niche fragrance houses that can do that anymore. Amouage can do that. Creed, not really. Creed are going down in that respect. I can't, I can't take Viking seriously at what four, five hundred, whatever, whatever the hell that is. I'm not buying Creed Viking for that, and I would recommend that none of you buy Creed Viking for that price. It's not that engaging in quality and in naturality. So, I'm gonna have to give the scent, which I don't want to, but I can't say to you. Oh yeah, four, five out of five, definitely scent-wise, at this price range, with this kind of mixed up, mixed messages kind of gig, I can't do that. Unfortunately, I have to give it a 2.5 out of five. And again, that's infuriating. The only thing that I can give this as a solid 4.5 out of five is the performance, which of course is monstrous. All of them are monstrous, but I'm talking like supercharged, whatever, niche budget or niche ideals that within these fragrances all go into the performance. And so again, the problem and the issue is clear. These things cost too damn much. Or you've got two options, I'd say. There's two options with this brand. Number one, take the bloody price down and stop touting it like it's this prestigious, Creed Roger Dove brand because it's not. And that's okay. It doesn't have to be. Nobody says that it has to be. If it sticks to what it's trying to be, what these fragrances sort of want to be, which is nice, pleasant, compliment getting, straightforward, pragmatic fragrances for solid usage, which is very efficient. I think it's a beautiful tribute to German ideology and, and, and German conceptualism. I think that that's fantastic, but you're going to have to take the prices down and you're going to have to accept that that's what it is. Or if you wanted to say, right, this is $400, which I, I've heard, I've never seen um, this video, but I've, I've actually heard that there's a video where Jeremy says, oh, I could sell this for pennies, but I choose not to. I hope that's not true. I'm just gonna say that. I hope that's not true because that is 
that is the most insulting. I, I, I don't even know where to begin with that. That is just purely like the most insulting thing ever. I hope that's not true. There's another factor here where my patience for this whole thing nearly snaps. And that is the whole discount, buy one, get one free, 10%, 20% off. That is where I bloody well draw the line with this whole thing. Because if you're trying to say that this is a prestigious brand in the same remit of Creed or Roger Dove, and then you do a buy one, get one free, or you do a 20 to 30% off discount, what do you think? Do you see Creed ever do any sort of set? I remember when I was working in Harvey Nichols, Creed, like there would be a sale on and Harvey Nichols would try to get Creed or Orange Square, which is the distributor for Creed. Well, they, they were in the UK for a, a time. I don't know if they still are. Creed would actively virtually fight, get into a fist fight saying, there's no way that you're putting any of our products, any of them, on sale. We don't want no 20, no 10, no 1% off. It's not happening. You don't see Creed saying, hey, on their website, Neural, buy, buy Aventus and get Millicene Imperial for free. You don't see Roger Dove saying, hey, buy one Enigma Parfum Cologne and then get another free or get 30% or 40% off on, I don't know, Elysium. It doesn't happen because they're a prestigious brand and they stick to the ideals of that being a prestigious brand, which means no sales, no buy one, get one freeze, because unfortunately that does cheapen the brand. It makes the brand subconsciously look as though you can't sell enough. We can't sell enough. So we're just gonna have to give it away a little bit more. Now, again, if this is a 70 to $80 practical line, you can do that all that you want. You can, make that call but i think that you get it this is a brand that does not have a clear identity yet and the more mixed messages the more rising of prices for fragrances that do not deserve that price point and it's fine that they don't it's absolutely fine that they don't black tie does not it shouldn't be 400 dollars office probably shouldn't be what it is. Date shouldn't be where it is. If you'd released this at the same price point as Office, maybe that's a bit more forgiving, but at the very, very maximum, all of these fragrances for 100 milliliter should be 120 euros maximum. And there is nothing wrong with that. I don't know if Jeremy's got something in his head where he's like, well, if I don't put it at 400 or whatever it is, or, you know, like above 250, above 300, then then I'm not, um, I'm not valuing myself. I'm not showing that I value my brand. I'm not showing that I'm, I'm confident with my brand. All that's got to go. All that mindset is not good enough anymore because the truth of the matter is you will get some Jeremy Fragrance fans who will buy this. But Jeremy Fragrance fans aren't the world. Jeremy Fragrance fans are not the retail world. And if this gets onto retail or whatever, or if somebody's just surfing the web, never heard of the Fragcom, never heard of Jeremy Fragrance, never heard of anything like this, and they see this advert for black tie, this is what's gonna happen. They're gonna click on it, and the advert's gonna say Jeremy Fragrance is the number one most subscribed YouTube fragrance reviewer of all time and all that kind of stuff, which is true. And they're gonna go, okay, that sounds interesting. Okay, cool. Then they're gonna look at the price, $400, and they're gonna go, um, what? Then they're gonna look on Fragrantica. They're gonna see the circus coming to town, the drama, the dislikes, the this, the that, the other, the, the hatred, the visceral hatred, the pain, the suffering, all of that, and they're just gonna to think to themselves, um, not a chance, I think I'm just gonna buy Dior Sauvage. So what am I going to rate this fragrance? Well, I'm gonna give it a three, which I think is fair. The scent, 2.5 out of five. Presentation, a two. But the performance is out of this world and outstanding. Price point is ridiculous, preposterous, infuriating, insulting, unneeded, unnecessary. I don't know why 
he decided to put this at such a high price point when he already knows that that's going to cause trouble. That's going to cause so many problems. It doesn't matter how many millions of subscribers that Jeremy has, likes, comments, awards, houses, homes, Ferraris, biceps, how many press-ups that he's done, it doesn't matter because the only thing that they're going to see is $400 and that's it. And they're going to go, uh, no, I think I'd like to eat for a week. Jeremy, please, this is a great fragrance. This is a great fragrance line, but make your decision with the identity about this line. Make it a more practical, succinct, straightforward line that's at a price that is obtainable and that has an image that's a lot more welcoming and a lot more easier to digest. Overall, black tie is getting a three out of five and that's it. Have you smelt black tie? What do you think? What do you think about this whole thing? I can't wait for the comments. It's gonna be a pretty wild one. Anyway, that is my review. Thanks so much. I will see you again. I'm the Fragrance Press. Bye.